Hi there, I'm Suzette Kroll, Registered Dietitian. I'm here to be your personal nutrition guide. In these months leading up to your weight loss surgery, it's a good idea to start making some changes to what you eat and drink so that you have a good jump start on what you're gonna be doing after your surgery. That's what these sessions are about. So today we're gonna to talk about fluid and protein. That's because after your surgery, you're going to be asked to meet two nutrition goals and two goals only, and those are drink 64 ounces of fluid a day, and get 80 grams of protein per day. Your recovery is going to depend on your ability to do these two things. So let's talk about the fluid. What you can start doing today and then continue doing forever forward is start drinking the right fluids and start drinking the right amount of fluids. The right fluids or beverages are any drink with less than 10 calories. For the first month after surgery, we're gonna ask you not to have caffeine or carbonation. So that's going to take out coffee and soda, even diet soda and sparkling water. The 64 ounce fluid goal is just that. It's a fluid goal. It's not a water goal. So any beverage that again is under 10 calories, not carbonated and not caffeinated can count toward those 64 ounces. If you're not a good water drinker, you don't like the taste of water, a couple of tips. One, bottled waters taste different brand to brand. So maybe try a few different brands. You might find one that you like better than another. Um, you could try putting a filter on your tap. That does help improve the taste of tap water. Just a note, you might find that the beverages that are artificially sweetened, like the Propel and the Powerade Zero, Crystal Light, Gatorade Zero, uh, the artificial sweetener might taste sweeter to you after surgery than it does now. So you might need to dilute these after surgery if you're going to use them as your fluid. Otherwise, you might want to choose fluids that are not artificially sweetened as water, alkaline water, spa waters, which would be water with fruit in it or vegetable like cucumber or herbs. Uh, Hint water is a brand of water that's flavored with no artificial sweetener. And there's always herbal tea and broth that count as fluid too. It's always easier to improve diet by addition and subtraction. So focus on all these things you can drink, not what you can't. The right amount is 64 ounces per day at minimum. Now this is one half of a gallon or two liters. It sounds like an awful lot when I say it that way, but if we look at it in smaller amounts more frequently, it actually seems more doable. So these are 16 ounce bottles. 16, ounce, 16 times four is 64. So if you can make a commitment to using 16 ounce bottles or cups and finish four of them, every day you'll hit your 64 ounces. Now I'm a huge fan of setting up a fluid schedule and drinking by a schedule. That means breaking up your waking hours. So for example, we're up from six to 10, maybe that's 16 hours, and divvy those hours by four. So 16 divided by four gives us four hours to complete each 16 ounce bottle or cup, right? So the schedule would look like this. From six to 10, finish the first 16 ounces. Then 10 to two, the next 16 ounce. Two to six, the third one. And six to bedtime, the fourth one. You get the idea. When you drink according to a fluid schedule, it means drinking because you have to, not because you're thirsty and not because you just happen to remember. But it means drinking because you're trying to achieve a goal of completing a certain amount by a certain time. I personally drink according to a fluid schedule every single day and I never miss my fluid goal. It does work like a charm. I hope that you'll use this idea and that it works for you too. We always want to avoid drinking calories. So we want to avoid soda and Gatorade, Powerade, lemonade, Kool-Aid, fruit juice even, horchata. These are filled with sugar and therefore calories. It adds up when we drink them regularly. 240 calories, maybe twice a day. It's 480 calories every day a week uh, is 3,360 calories. There's 3,500 calories in a pound of body fat. So you could see how drinking 40 ounces of soda or 44, which is like a big gulp, how that leads to a pound a week. So that's why we don't drink calories. And if that doesn't convince you, maybe this will. This is the effect of soda on your teeth over time. So as a goal from now until your next visit, focus on what to drink, not what not to drink, and drink 64 ounces of these low calorie, non-carbonated, non-caffeinated beverages. Now on to protein. After your surgery, we're gonna ask that you meet 80 grams of protein per day. 
This amount is not necessarily important at this point. I just want to orient you to protein foods, get you understanding what your good choices are, and then start picking protein a little bit every time you eat. So beef probably comes to mind when you think of protein, like the old Wendy's commercial, where's the beef? But beef is not the only source of protein. We also have chicken and turkey, pork and lamb, fish and shellfish, dairy products, eggs, beans and peas and lentils, tofu and almond cheese, nuts, seeds, and even jerky and deli meats like turkey and roast beef and ham. You'll get a list of these today in your session so you can refer back to them. It's important to try to choose the leaner cuts of meat and the lean poultry and the lean ground meats. And these again will be on your list today. If budget allows organic, free range and grass fed meat and poultry are good choices, but they're not necessary. I want to point out the ground meats for a minute, ground beef, ground uh, chicken, ground turkey. You'll, you can buy them in the 80s percentages, 80, 20, 85, 15, or the 90s percentages, 93, 7, 99, 1. We want to try to pick the percentages in the 90s, and here's why. Here's a little bit of math, okay? We call it the 10 times rule. It means look at the protein count and look at the calories on a label. Multiply your protein times 10. So in this case, 19 times 10 is 190. And then go back and look at the calories. Ideally, the calories are less than 10 times the protein. In this case, it's not. So this isn't really a lean protein. In our 90-10, you see an improvement here. There's 20 grams of protein times 10 would be 200. Right? So, and our calories here are 160. So, this is a lean protein. Our calories are less than 10 times the protein count. This is a good rule of thumb to help you rule out some of these products that try to get you to buy them, trick you into buying them because they claim to have so much protein. So, this is Linny and Larry's cookie. They say there's 16 protein, but notice that really two, uh, the whole cookie has 16 protein. Half of it only has eight and we're spending 180 for that eight protein. So eight times 10 is 80. This is really too many calories for the protein. So it's a giveaway that this is not a good choice. Plus it's a packaged processed food. So that's another giveaway that it's not a good choice. Here's one more chance to practice the math. This is chicken breast tenders. We have 26 protein here. So 26 times 10 is 260. Go back and check the calories, 120. 120 is less than 260, less than half even, so this is a great protein choice. How you cook your chicken and fish and turkey and meat does matter. Try to trim off, trim off as much fat as you can before you cook, and then pour off as much fat as you can after you cook it. Use low-fat cooking methods like steaming, grilling, poaching, baking, and broiling. Avoid sauteing in oil, even if it's a so-called healthy oil like olive oil and certainly avoid um, deep frying and then covering your protein with some kind of cream sauce or cheese sauce. That's gonna disqualify it as being a good protein source at that point. If you're not familiar with how to cook fish, this is a good time to get good at it. Try youtube.com for videos on how to cook fish. You can learn by watching or try pinterest.com. It's a great resource for recipes we have a Tucson Bariatric Pinner account. Be sure to check out our recipes there. If you don't like to cook fish because it stinks up the house, which is valid concern, try eating fish at lunch. These star kiss tuna creation and salmon creations are great options. They're already made, they're already seasoned. You simply tear the top off and eat it right out of the pouch, or you could add it to a bag salad, or maybe add a side of baby carrots or an apple with it. And dairy products are good sources of protein. However, they can have baggage added fat. So make sure you're using no fat, low fat, reduced fat, 0% or 2% dairy products like Greek yogurt, cheese, cottage cheese, and ricotta cheese for your protein. And then there's beans. Beans are a great source of protein. Sometimes they get thrown under the bus because they have carbohydrates in them, but they get a free pass. These carbohydrates are good carbohydrates. Beans are filled with fiber, they're filling, they're real whole foods, they're not processed packaged foods. So they are fine to eat and in fact start 
trying to eat them more often as a goal. And nuts and seeds and nut butters like peanut butter do have protein in them, but they have more fat than protein. So try to limit the servings of these to once, maybe twice a day at the very most, and limit your serving sizes of these. You can use an ounce or a half a cup as a serving on the nuts and seeds. It's a good idea to keep a measuring cup in the bag so you never overdo it. And you can use two tablespoons as portioning on, portioning on the peanut butter. Sometimes the barrier to eating protein is that it seems like a lot of work to cook it. So here are some ideas for each meal for quick, easy, just grab and go proteins. For breakfast, you could have Greek yogurt or cottage cheese or hard boiled eggs. For lunch, those pouches, the tuna pouches, salmon pouches or chicken pouches or deli turkey are great choices. Snacks uh, like cheese sticks or beef jerky are very simple. And for dinner, you could use rotisserie chicken pre-cooked frozen shrimp, or cans of beans or bean soups. So make it a goal from here until your next visit and really from here forward to try to eat a little bit of protein at every meal, most meals or your main meals. So breakfast could be omelets and load them up with lots of vegetables or Greek yogurt with fruit. Lunch could be those uh, salmon or tuna pouches or chicken pouches over a salad. And dinner could be a lentil soup or a stir fry and you could add the rotisserie chicken or the pre-cooked shrimp. You get the idea. So goals from now until next visit. Fluid goals, get 64 ounces of the right kinds of fluid, set up a fluid schedule, and then protein. Try to eat a small amount of protein at most meals. Make an effort to try to choose beans more often as your protein and limit the nuts and seeds and nut butters as the protein. Start writing down every single thing you eat and drink. You'll receive some forms today and some instruction on how to fill them out, and you'll bring them back at all your following appointments. Okay, so we'll see you next time. My name's Suzette Kroll. I'm your personal nutrition guide. Have a great month.